now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. Well, good morning, everybody, and happy Monday morning to all of you. I am Andrew Langer in for Larry O'Connor today. Joining me as she does on Monday is Julie Gunlock. Hello, Julie. Good morning. Recovered from your commute in? <laughs> yes. I just stopped shaking. Yeah, that's, that's good. Well, we are, we, of course, it is 707 here on News Talk 105.9, uh, 105.9 WMAL, making sense of the news. Listen, we've got a great show coming up. Got Tom Fitton from Judicial Watch joining us in the next hour. Congressman Ben Klein from Virginia 6th Congressional District joining us as well. Uh, joining us right now, as he does every Monday, Joe DeGeneva, the former U.S. Attorney to the District of Columbia, is a legal analyst. Uh, listen, so we, Joe, we've been we've been playing uh, these clips of Mitt Romney talking about Joe Biden. Uh, Mitt Romney says there's uh, no evidence to support an impeachment inquiry, and it's like I don't, dude, I don't know what channel you've been watching, but uh, clearly there's evidence to support an inquiry. What are your thoughts here? Stupefying comments yes. uh, from Senator Romney. <laughs> you know, he reminds me of Leonard Zelig. Woody Allen's uh, famous sure. character. Romney ad 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 adapts the atmosphere in which he attends. Sure. When he was in Massachusetts, he was more he was more liberal than Ken Kennedy, and he announced himself that way. He's just a strange individual. Who uh, John Huntsman? You remember the gov the former governor of Utah, who uh, was uh, the United States ambassador to China, a really brilliant guy, said that Mitt's problem is that he's always wanted to be king of the Mormons and yes. never been able to get there. And so uh, I think basically you have a guy who's a disappointed office seeker. Remember how he groveled at Trump's speech to be yep. secretary of state? And, right. of course, he didn't get it, and that was a very wise decision, one of the few wise personnel decisions that President Trump made. But the evidence of the president's complicity, Joe Biden's complicity, in a bribery conspiracy scheme – uh, is evident now to anybody who wishes to see it. All they have to do is listen to Tony Bobolinsky's testimony, see what Leslie Wolf did in Delaware to stop the questioning about the Bi Bidens or the or the issuance of search warrants. And the and the other thing is just look at the indictment that David Weiss brought against uh, Hunter Biden. No money laundering, no Farrah violation. In other words, nothing right. that would link anything to Joe Biden. Right. So what you are watching is a joke and Romney is the biggest part of that joke. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so funny, Jonathan Turley had a uh, column this weekend. He said the tax evasion charges were b brought in a type of Voldemort indictment, skillfully detailing, <laughs> detailing millions acquired from influence peddling without mentioning he who must not be named. Joe, who is that man who must not be named? Well, Obviously, Joe Biden is the name that can't be mentioned. But <laughs> what's interesting about it is David Weiss made this indictment salacious purposely in the hopes that that would distract people with a shiny yep. object from the underlying problem, which is that David Weiss allowed the statute of limitations to expire on the tax years 2014 and 2015, which were precisely the years when Joe Biden was exercising his authority as right. vice president of the United States and was having his influence sold by his son. Right. Uh, this is a, anybody who says there's no evidence, and this includes that corrupt congressman from New York, Goldman, uh, who was an attendee at the January 6th hearings and the impeachments, um, I think is really a silly person. Uh, and, and that's why, by the way, it's been embarrassing to watch the Republicans, the House Republicans conduct themselves for a year and a half as if there were no evidence and constantly saying the wrong things publicly about the evidence. So I just think, you know, we'll see where we get on impeachment and the impeachment inquiry. Who knows? I have no confidence in the Republicans in the House at all. Well, let me let me ask you this, Joe, while we're talking about this, because this is a question that sort of comes up in my mind on the constitutionality. Does impeachment, does it only, does it only apply to, to so-called crimes that happened while the president was president? I mean, can the president be impeached for things that he did as vice president of the United States? Or a senator. Absolutely. Yeah. Or, if, or Of course, because impeachment is what the House says it is. Yes. Whether or not the Senate will convict is another question. 
Remember, there is no law, quote unquote, law in this area. This is all a political legal decision made first by the House of Representatives. And that is why it is mind boggling that it has taken the Republicans who are frightened of their own shadow to get to the point where they are now. And I'm not even sure where they are. Every time you ask them, will there be an inquiry? They say, well, we're we think we have the votes. We think we have the votes. Well, they may not have the votes. And if they don't, shame on them. But that's just where we are. Yes, of course, he can be impeached, especially for things that happened while he was vice president, uh, because those are clearly covered, even if you take a legalistic approach to impeachment. He was vice president when he committed acts of basically treason. Uh, it, it really is gross what is in this indictment, things that they have laid out. Some of the stuff yeah. Hunter Biden spent money on, a uh, Russian prostitute, Yana, Larry Flint's Hustler Club. I love the 70000 for new teeth. Um, new teeth. A, a, like a sex cam site, Chateau Marmont. Um, it, it, th- this this was a, you know, everyone talks about how deeply troubled is he was with his drug addiction. There are plenty of drug addicts who don't then go spend money like this. Um, th- th- this is just foul what has been laid out here well i I think this this woe is me approach to defining hunter biden is does not sit well with the american people there may be a few families out there who have dealt with drug addiction in their families who have sympathy for him and that's fine but he was the son of the president vice president and president of the united states and a u.s senator he did nothing for a living except sit on boards that his father got him on, like MBNA up in Delaware, uh, got all sorts of sweetheart loans from banks in Delaware, just like his father did. This is an unending story of corruption in the Biden family. When you look at them and you see the trail of just disgraceful conduct that follows them wherever they go, uh, there's no way to turn away from this without a sick stomach as an American. Yeah. What, what is remarkable to me is that the American people have been as forgiving as they, as, as they have been. If they, were, if they were truly engaged and cared about this, this guy would have been long gone because the uproar for impeachment would have been greater. And it's amazing to me that the uproar for impeachment is not very great. And that is the fault of the mainstream media who have been complicit in the president's illegal activity and the conduct of his son. I mean, it really is amazing to me, Joe, we're talking with Joe DeGeneva, former U.S. attorney for D.C., that we we kicked out George Santos. And we can all listen. We can all talk about George Santos and and his issues. But George Santos, not convicted of anything. We're going to kick him out. And yet we can't seem to get our act together in terms of figuring out that we're going to even do an investigation, a greater investigation of Joe Biden. I mean, how what what's what's the disconnect here, Joe? You have a very bad set of Republicans in the House of Representatives and an even worse bunch in the United States Senate, Romney being a, a classic example of the nitwittery that uh, uh, occupies the United States Senate in the Republican Party. The House of Representatives on the Republican side is a mess. So let's see, they have a very thin majority, so let's expel a member who hasn't been convicted yet, and yet they want to do nothing about Senator Menendez, the Republicans in the Senate, who should be screaming for his expulsion. Right. And who do we get right. screaming for his expulsion? Santa. We get uh, we get young Frankenstein. <laughs> <John Fetterman>, yes. <laughs> oh, yes, exactly. Put it, it is, on the it wrist. Is... All, every time I see Fetterman, all I can see is Peter Boyle dancing on stage, <laughs> seeing putting on the wrist. And he's and he's getting more and more likable, like Peter Boyle every day. Listen, Joe, we're going to continue to talk about this, but first at seven fifteen a.m. WMAL traffic and weather every 10 minutes first on the fives. Here is Jamie Witten in the Hadid Carpet Cleaning Traffic Center. WMAL. Making sense of the news. Live from the Home Paramount Pest Control Studios. Home Paramount, the leader in pest control since 1939. WMAL. Making sense of the vote because elections have consequences. Download the WMAL app to stream us for free. So we're to, I'm Andrew Langer in for Larry O'Connor today. We're talking with Joe DeGeneva, uh, a, a former U.S. attorney for the District of Columbia. So Trump's not going to testify today, Joe, uh, in his trial. How are how are things going in this uh, in this crazy New York trial these days? Well, it's a fix. I mean, the fix is in. You have a nutty judge who's already ruled that the that the Trump organization and Trump and his family are liable 
uh, not guilty as the idiots at Fox and elsewhere keep calling to him yeah. that the judge has found him guilty. He's found him liable. This isn't a criminal case. Uh, Trump is being very wise by not, uh, uh, you know, occasionally he does something with, that's wise. Uh, by not testifying in New York, there's no need for it. The expert witnesses have proved conclusively that the judge's summary judgment in favor of the attorney general of New York is fatally flawed and, and, and idiotic almost. But um, it's, it's, he's, his state is sealed. And by the way, all these people who keep pinning their hopes on an appeal of these cases, I think watching the New York uh, Court of Appeals system work, I have very little faith in that judicial process in New York. I think it is so politically corrupt that there's no way Trump's going to be vindicated about anything by any of the judges higher up in these cases. And I think he very well could lose his empire uh, in a case that would be viewed in history as the end of business in New York. Because the truth is, no one in his right mind should want to do business in the state of New York because of their <laughs> laws, their political appointees, and, and the people who run the, the law enforcement of the state. The place is basically a corrupt uh, Eastern European enterprise. Does it, in, in, in the end, right, none of this really matters to the voters. I mean, if you, if you hate Trump, you're never going to vote for Trump, regardless of what the outcome is. If you're a Trump supporter, or even if you're a run-of-the-mill Republican looking at what's going on with Joe Biden, none of this really matters, does it? Well, I, I, I don't think it does to a lot of people because I think they've written it off as the politics of New York and that it is a corrupt. All of these endeavors are corrupt enterprises, except for the people who despise Trump, like Romney. Uh, and they believe that anything that's done against him is done uh, in good faith, even though it's done in bad faith, because their vision is blurred and destroyed by their hatred for Trump. This blind hatred destroys their judgment. All you have to do is listen to Romney and just listen and hear how stupid, how utterly stupid he sounds when he says certain things. And that's how the, the Trump haters act. They're just dumb. Their hatred is so powerful, so complete. They're, they, are, they are submerged in this hatred that they, they sound and act like idiots when they talk about facts because they don't talk about facts. But, uh, you know, there's the other side of this, which is at a certain point, the American people may say to themselves, I'm not, I don't like this. I don't like what I see. I don't like the way this man is being treated, even though I don't like him. I don't like the way the government, the various governments, state and federal, are treating him. And it could help him out in a certain way. But the biggest problem for Trump is once the trials start, and they will start before the election, how do you campaign on those circumstances? And you can do one of two things. You can go to every trial, or you can say, I'm not going to go to any trials. I'm going to campaign. I'm going to waive my right to be present in all my criminal trials. That'll be an interesting decision. Yeah. You know, Joe, I, I think a lot of us have been worried about sort of the narrative coming out of some of these publications, The Atlantic, you know, saying that he is the greatest threat to the... I mean, they've dedicated an entire magazine to a series of articles basically laying out um, the reason that Trump can't be president. And, you know, some folks over at the Federalist, Sean Davis, for instance, and Molly Hemingway, they're calling this assassination prep, which I think is totally fitting. I mean, it's sort of this idea of what should be done to stop... We should do anything to stop this man. Do you find that a little chilling? Absolutely. And in fact... It is an invitation to physical violence. Yes. Now, remember, it is the liberals who told us that words are violent. Right. They can be violent. This is, in essence, by the way, I canceled my subscription to The Atlantic 10 years ago yeah. when it started sounding like a cesspool of intellectual leftism. Yeah. But the problem now is the left is invigorated by its complete control, basically, of the media and being able to say anything they want to say and never be held to account for it. Uh, and that includes the New York Times, because what's happening at the Atlantic is basically a subterfuge for an assassination yep. attempt. They yeah. are they are encouraging people to attempt to kill uh, Donald Trump. And there isn't any now. You'll never hear Garland at the Justice Department, our esteemed attorney general, say anything about that publicly. Right. We should be remonstrating against this type of public discourse. But he won't because Garland and the DOJ wants to encourage this type of outrageous conduct. Now, if you were a, a white Christian mother going to a school board who was concerned about what your children right. were being taught and what they were being exposed to, 
strong one would be and has been all over you. But if you want to basically right. imply that the president, former president, should be assassinated, that's all okay with Garland. Jeez. Well, listen, Joe, we got to leave it there. Uh, oh, so much appreciate you coming on with us this morning. Delighted to be with you all. God bless Always. you and Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas. You, Talk to you next week. Now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. Well, welcome back, everybody. I am Andrew Langer in for Larry O'Connor today. It is 737 on News Talk 105.9 WMAL, making sense of the news. Happy Monday to everybody. Good morning, Julie Gunlock. Good morning. Always love sitting in with Julie yeah. and chatting with her about stuff. <laughs> always, always helpful. I can vent. I can vent about the things <laughs> that are going on in my life. This is the next hour of the show. We got uh, Tom Fitton from Judicial Watch joining us. Congressman Ben Klein as well. Uh, in the meantime, Julie, I know you and Larry talked about this a couple of times, this story out of uh, my backyard, Williamsburg, Virginia, uh, the story of both the menorah lighting issue uh, at the festival that was happening here, yeah. the arts festival. You guys talked about this last week? Yes. Well, it it turns out the second Sunday got canceled anyway uh, because of the weather. Um, so so nothing nothing happened at all. I mm. I, I do feel badly because there were vendors at second Sunday that that were relying on the Christmas sales. Um, but you know it was one of those things where uh, there were there were folks talking about responses. I was involved in some of those discussions as to what to do about this. And essentially, the two rabbis in Williamsburg, and I think there are only two rabbis in Williamsburg. There's the Chabad rabbi, which is the more conservative organization. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then there is the reformed rabbi at the Temple Bethel, uh, Rabbi Katz. Uh, they did a they were going to be doing a menorah lighting ceremony in Williamsburg on the College of William and Mary campus. And in point of fact, um, uh, they did. They did it on uh, they did it on uh, on Thursday night. Uh, along with AE Pi, which is a Jewish fraternity on, on campus. And it Good. apparently was a beautiful event. I couldn't go. I was in D.C. that night, uh, but my wife was there. My daughter was there. Good. And it was, it was, it was, a, it was apparently a, a, a great stuff here. Of course, the issue was, as I said earlier on in the show, it was kind of marred by the fact that there was pro-Palestinian graffiti that appeared. By the way, you, you don't see a lot of uh, uh, pro-Israeli pro-Jewish graffiti appearing on campuses. It seems only the pro-Hamas side is, right. uh, is, is uh, putting up uh, putting up. Because uh, vandalism is okay when yes. you write Gaza. Yes. Right, right. We, you know, it gets into this, what we've said, speech is violence, and violence is a form of speech according to, according to the left. So William & Mary, um, uh, there, is, there is some criticisms. Obviously, the criticisms can be had anywhere, but they seem to be charting a decent course. Uh, not so much at other, other colleges. We had this hearing last week. Uh, here is um, uh, here is let's play cut number seven. The U, the U Penn president being asked about this. It is a context dependent decision, <laughs> Congresswoman. It's a con context dependent decision. That's your testimony today. Calling for the genocide of Jews is depending upon the context. That is not bullying or harassment. This is the easiest question to answer. <laughs> yes, Miss McGill. And 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 the and the answer eventually came, didn't it, Julie? Because McGill stepped down over the weekend, as well as the chairman of the board, think, by the way, which was stunning. I, Go ahead. I will say I found all of them: the head of MIT, the head of Harvard, the head of UPenn, to be grossly, yeah, I'm just out of line. Um, but there was something about President Liz McGill's face, the smirk, oh yeah, the, smirk. the smile, the oh God, you're so dense. Um, when she would respond to Stefanik, um, who was relentless, thank God, and she was great. But uh, it, there was just something about Miguel. I mean, uh, again, um, and I'm not suggesting that the president of Harvard and MIT weren't equally bad, but um, Miguel, boy, she really came off as um, pretty awful. In you that know, hearing. this this seems to be a a perennial problem amongst uh, college administrators. Now, I, I've I've had I've had you know interactions with really great college presidents or and and thoughtful chairman uh, chair people of college boards as well. But there are so many of them that are out there. Uh, you know, we got this. Uh, obviously, we could well, talk about Saturday Night Live's response. Yes. Well, we're also, but I, we should yeah. say we are seeing support for Harvard and MIT. Now this weekend for their presidents, we are seeing yeah. people saying no, 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 you know. But there's also they've done some investigation into President Gay, Harvard, yeah. Harvard's President Gay, um, 
after the George Floyd death where she sure. basically said, she laid this out. She laid out a blueprint for how she wants basically this to happen and how certain yeah. groups who are, as I've mentioned earlier, the sorting who are seen as oppressors just don't right. get the protections, just don't get the protections that other, other groups get uh, right. like people of color. Um, so this is intentional. You know, everyone's saying, well, you know, these presidents got up there, they were unprepared, which by the way, they went through murder boards with these, uh, these, law firms they were sure. prepared they were incredibly prepared for this yes um and so everyone's saying you know oh well this she was unprepared or this was a mistake or she misspoke or no. you know and and honestly when you're defending her why are you defending her when she came out when president harvard's president gay came out and apologized she said she was sorry for doing this so she has admitted to being in the wrong so, um so very disappointing to see that yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna hear in a couple of minutes what how saturday night live took Ugh. this which is always just you know anyway it's just always fascinating to sort of see the prism in which they view the world uh, on the other hand another yet another moment of lucidity from bill maher uh, on on real time his hbo show here's what he had to say on friday let's play cut eight yeah i, I you know i i, I honestly <laughs> think the kids I think they're, you know that phrase, useful idiots? Yeah. <laughs> the, the bigger scandal here is that these are the biggest, most esteemed colleges in the country, and they've raised a bunch of idiots. Yep. But that's, but that's also by design. I mean, that's the thing. It's the concept of useful fools, the concept of propagandizing and indoctrination. This is, this is the end result. Listen, it's, uh, we got more coming up. It's uh, 743 on WMAL. It's funny. The press used to uh, used to be able to call out Saturday Night Live when it stopped being funny. You know, the, during the 1980s, they were constantly predicting it. But now you got the press rooting for them, a and so it's it's fascinating to me because Rolling Stone had said, you know, Saturday Night Live. They were talking about this weekend's episode of Saturday Night Live. I watched a segment called Airplane Baby, which was kind of funny, and then it and it died. But they are cold open. <laughs> They're cold open. One of the worst in history. They got it completely wrong. Let's let's take a listen to how SNL covered the uh, the uh, the anti-Semitism on campus hearings. Let's play cut ten. We're joined today by the heads of three of our most esteemed universities: the president of MIT, Sally Kornbluth. I've never been more afraid to be anywhere. <laughs> the president of UPenn, Elizabeth McGill. Can I just resign now? <laughs> Not yet. And the president of Harvard, Dr. Claudine Gay. Thank you. Dr. Gay, would you like to do a quick joke about your name to get it out of the way? I would. Dr. Gay sounds like a molly dealer on Fire Island. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I'll turn it over to mega superstar Elise Stefanik from New York, who's been pacing the hallways listening to Lose Yourself by Eminem. Miss Stefanik. Thank you, chairwoman. Now, I'm going to start screaming questions at these women like I'm Billy Eichner. Anti-Semitism, yay or nay? God. I mean, really, it, it is, it, it's, not, it's not clever anymore. I'm sorry, go ahead, Julie. It's, it's... No, it's not clever. It's not funny. SNL hasn't been funny for over a decade, more yeah. than a decade, though, so not a surprise. But it, th I will say that opening was actually a little bit funny. I was laughing yeah. a little bit because I'd missed the opening. But as it goes on, it gets worse. I mean, it gets much more, much more unfunny, much more unfunny, uh, much less funny, I should say. Yes. And um, and again, they they cast Stefanik as the, the as as the bad actor here. So well, right. That's the the, the message. The message in the end is. Uh, this is not worth Congress's time. Yeah, and, then and, Elise Stefanik and Stefanik is just is a mega, shrill yes. and it's overly angry and, yeah, hysterical. They definitely cast her as this which, hysterical woman. Which, you know, White pardon, woman, yeah, Pardon me, but, I, but I, I thought we were beyond this point where we were even using this as parody, where we were... I thought we were not supposed to be portraying women as, as, as shrill. Women in power is shrill. I thought that was a bad thing. Right. The, the idea, right. What, idea. what happened is she persisted, right? Yes. Right. Yes. And, and so you have, you, have this, you have this situation in which they're very clearly trying to say that, that, this is, that this is beneath Congress and it's only because MAGA Republicans want to make this an issue. Uh, and, and then, right, the end, they're, they're, the, the tale of that, clip was you know i'm gonna uh, scream well i'm gonna scream but it's also the screaming that that anti-semitism is is bad as though 
it goes without saying that on these college campuses they they think this let's uh, let's hear one more one more cut here let's play cut number 11. i'm sorry what yes i'm always calling for the genocide of jews against the code of conduct for harvard well it depends on the context <gasps> what <laughs> that can't be your answer you pen lady same question yes or no well, we are serious about stopping all forms of hatred, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia. Uh, that, 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 the second one, and my tea lady, chance to steal. And keep in mind, if you don't say yes, you're going to make me look good, which is really, really hard to do. I mean, so I'll ask you straight up. Do you think genocide is bad? Could I submit an answer in writing at a later date? <laughs> Winning this hearing? <laughs> Somebody pinch me. <laughs> Miss Stefanik, your time is up. Oh, thank God. Yeah. It, so they, of course, I mean, they make Stefanik sound insane, right? They yes. make, they give her this shrill voice, right? As as our producer Heather Hunter wrote on Twitter, SNL goes Republican pounce route on Ivy League presidents, and yes. if there's any time to pounce on Ivy League presidents, it's when they're saying that anti-Semitism is a context issue. That right. is a time to pounce. And 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 casting Stefanik as the shrill hysterical woman and these and notice that the SNL comedians playing the Harvard, MIT and UPenn presidents are all calm. Their voices yes. are normal. Right? But she the Stefanik, they make her sound like a lunatic. Right. It's just backwards. They had an incredible opportunity to sort of speak truth to power, which they love to do, right? And they gave it up. They gave well, it again, up. Well, again, right, and, and, and going the route of Bill Maher, where they can have right. this idea, you know, of, of sort of opening it up and sort of talking about the reality of the situation. Anyway, so much more to get to. It's uh, 7.53 here on O'Connor & Company, WMAL.